Welcome back to the Professor's Lab. I'm Professor V, and this is round two of the league tournament that happened at Die Hard Games on August 8th, 2024. If you didn't know, Die Hard League happens every Thursday at 6 p.m. Central, featuring casual and tournament play of whatever format everyone wants. More info in the description. Stellar Crown pre-releases start Saturday, August 31st, 1 p.m. Central at Die Hard Games. And check out Pokemon's event locator for premiere and other events at the shop, such as League Challenges, League Cups, pre-releases, and more. Please hit that like button right quick, subscribe to this channel, ring the bell for notifications, say what you need to say in the comments, and all that other good free stuff. But anyways, let's get researching this game. On the left, Arceus. Lightning. On the right, Ancient. Our Ancient player is starting us off with a Pokestop Stadium put into play. That stadium allows a player to look at the top three cards of their deck, put them in the discard pile, or should I say discard the top three cards of their deck, and then add any item cards to their hand that were discarded this way. A couple of ancient tag cards hit the discard pile, exactly what that card is in this deck to do for this ancient deck. And a uh, item, the Pokegear 3.0, will be added to the hand. Of course, this ancient deck relies on attacking with that Roaring Moon. And Roaring Moon does more damage based off of all the ancient tag cards that are in the discard pile. Next, an Awakening Drum, the ace spec of choice for this deck, is played. That item card has you draw a card for each of your ancient Pokemon in play. So the uh, Awakening Drum ancient tag card also hits a disc pile, discard pile, and one card is drawn here. Next, an Ultra Ball is found and played. Ultra Ball has you discard a couple cards and then search your deck for a Pokemon. Another ancient card hits the discard pile, four of them there now. And now we see the star of the show hit the field, Roaring Moon. Oh, nope, sorry, just kidding. Actually, Greninja. We all know Radiant Greninja is the star, that shiny Pokemon there. Radiant Greninja has the Concealed Cards ability that allows the player to discard an energy card and draw two cards. Darkness Energy is in the discard pile now. That's good because it can be, be accelerated later. Energy attached to the active Flutter main and play is passed over to our Arceus Lightning player. The Flutter main, of course, we need to touch on has the midnight fluttering ability as long as this Pokemon is in the active spot your opponent's active Pokemon has no abilities except for midnight fluttering so when that Arceus V evolves into Arceus V star it's got no abilities whatever Pokemon's in the active spot does not so long as that flutter remains in the active spot as well our Arceus Lightning player is taking a look at their hand here, trying to plot their next or their first move. Pokestop is live for them as well if they choose to use it. I believe, yeah, this is a Maridon based deck, so we definitely want to try to get that Pokemon into play and start tandem uniting other Pokemon into play. Um, boxed order, boxes order, not a card we normally see, so I'm going to have to look up that one. Boxed order. Search your deck for up to two item cards, reveal them, and put them into your hand, then shuffle your deck. Your turn ends. Okay, that's a way to find um, Maridon. So boxed order can search for a something like a nest ball, or any other search card. I see a nest ball right there on the bottom of the deck. That can find them right on and get things rolling here. A couple of item cards are chosen here. Alright, so our player is seeing what options they've got. They're setting aside uh, the item cards to try to best decide which two to grab off of this boxed order here. That's actually a very interesting card to be playing in a Maridon-based deck. 
The more I think about it, search your deck for up to two item cards, reveal them, and put them in your hand. And it's off of an item card as well, so you could play multiple boxed order, get multiple item cards. But I think our player may be after a nest ball and a electric generator here. But we'll see what they decide upon. Uh, Ultra Ball wouldn't be a bad choice either to grab that Lugia V-Star, or excuse me, Archeops. <laughs> excuse me, Arceus V-Star. But it looks like while I was stumbling, our player did decide on their two items here. Nest Ball and Energy Switch. Okay. So the Nest Ball, I imagine, is going to get played almost immediately. But did they just pass? Oh, they actually passed things over. Okay. So what I, I would have probably liked to see was that Nest Ball being played there. Finding the Maridon. Maridon using Tandem Unit to find more electric Pokemon to put them into play. Thin that deck out. Get your board set up. But let's see how this strategy pays off as our ancient player starts their turn off now with a Pokestop. Discarding three item cards. Look at that fire right there. Those three item cards are going to just be added right into the hand. That Pokestop just basically read draw three cards for our player here. As they next play a Pokegear 3.0 to look at the top seven cards of their deck and put a supporter they find there into their hand. That Explorer's Guidance will be found off of that Pokegear 3.0 added to the hand. Next an Ultra Ball is played, discarding a Coridon. Really the only reason the Coridon and Fluttermane are in the deck is to be in the discard pile to boost that Roaring Moon's damage, but Ultra Ball discards a couple cards, one of them being an Ancient card, in order to now bring out that Roaring Moon. It's all about the Vengeance Fletchling attack on that card. Two Darkness Energy, 70 plus. This attack does 10 more damage for each Ancient card in your discard pile. So that's why we want to get all the Ancient cards, except for Roaring Moon, basically, into the discard pile to boost that Vengeance Fletching attack. Just pokes in the early game, but fatal blows in the late game. As this Explorer's Guidance is played, that supporter has you look at the six top six cards of your deck, discard four of them, and keep two of them. I wasn't quite sure what was grabbed there, but we'll just move along with the turn with a Radiant Greninja concealed cards, discarding energy, drawing two cards. Next, Earthen Vessel is played. That item has, has you discard a card in order to search the deck for up to two basic energy and put them in your hand. The Earthen Vessel, of course, discarded another Ancient Tag card there in order to pluck out of the deck a Darkness Energy and a Fighting Energy. Plenty of Darkness Energy in the discard pile to be accelerated with something like Professor Sada's Vitality or Dark Patch. Darkness Energy attached to the bench, Roaring Moon. And things are just passed back over to our Arceus Lightning Player. So I'm sure we will see a Nest Ball get played this turn here to find that Maridon to start tandem uniting, uniting out additional basic Lightning type Pokemon. Evolving into Arceus V Star and attacking would be nice this turn as well. The Flutter Main is definitely shutting off that Arceus V Star, V Star Power ability, unfortunately. But a knockout and energy being accelerated can still happen. I think you go for that if you can. Arceus V Star, of course, has the V Star Power ability, Star Birth. When you flip that V Star marker, you can search your deck any two cards. But remember it's currently shut off by that flutter main across from it in the active spot, so spin in the wheel with Pokey Stop. Discard the top three cards of the deck. And you may put any item cards you find there into your hand. Electric generator and pow pad found. 
negating that discard of the boss's orders with that pal pad find as well. So overall, not a bad pokey stop at all. Shout out to our newer players here. The player on the left is a newer player. So they are definitely learning using this as a chance to hone the fundamental skills of the game while having fun. As an electric generator is played, that item has you look at the top five cards of the deck and you can accelerate up the two lightning energy you find there to your bench lightning Pokemon in any way you like, but zero energy found in those top five cards, unfortunately. It happens. Can't tell you how many times that's happened to me, but I still am addicted to the card as a second electric generator is played. Let's look at the top five. Let's see if we can make up for that last miss and find two lightning energy. We found one for sure. Okay, we'll take it. That lightning energy will be attached to the bench Zara Aura there. As it's the only target. Now this is another reason why it's also good to um, find that Maridon early and start using its ability tandem unit early to search for up to two basic lightning Pokemon to add to the bench as it pulls those Pokemon out of the deck. And if there's less Pokemon in the deck, there's a greater ratio of energy cards for those electric generators to reach for and hit when you need them. We are now going to see that nest ball be played in order to search the deck for a basic Pokemon to put onto the bench and guess who that basic Pokemon is? We've been talking about them for a little while now that Maridon EX will join the party here. Maridon EX of course has the tandem unit ability you can search your deck for up to two lightning Pokemon with that ability and put them onto your bench. A common strategy is to find as one of those lightning Pokemon another Maridon, so that way another tandem unit can be used if desired. Really it just depends on your strategy, the matchup, and what you decide to do in the moment of course. What's in deck, what's in hand all the things to weigh and consider in order to be competitive in the Pokemon trading card game. I believe we are seeing a tandem unit now. Our players setting those cards aside as potential options, potential targets of the tandem unit. And a Palmy and a second, there we go, we called it second Maridon. That is a Maridon with tandem unit, so I think we may be seeing another tandem unit here. Just one more Pokemon can fit on the bench if the player decides to go for another. Or it also can be wise sometimes to leave that bench space open to keep your options open for later in the turn or the game. Let's see if there's any other cards that will be chosen to be played here. It doesn't really look like it, or at least that's what body language is telling me. Energy Switch was one card I see in hand, but I, I don't think we want to play that one quite yet. As things are passed back over to our ancient player here. Let's see if they can start swinging this turn. Earthen Vessel discards a Fighting Energy in order to search the deck for a couple more Darkness Energy to add to the hand. Also getting another Ancient Tad card into the discard pile. We've got to get an Ancient Counter <laughs> going on here. Greninja discards an energy to draw two cards with its ability. Pokestop is spun now. Three non-item cards hit the discard pile, but it looks like there are three ancient tag cards, so that's always taken by the ancient player. 
Ultra Ball is being played now, debating on being played now, to potentially get more ancient cards in the discard pile. Lots of energy in the discard pile, I think, at this point. So the Explorer's Guidance and the Countercatcher will be discarded off the Ultra Ball in order to search the deck for another Roaring Moon to put onto the board. <laughs> Excellent use of the ability markers there. Our player is going to check the Ancient Count here. 10, 15, I think it was, for 220 damage, as now a Professor Sada Vitality is played. That supporter card allows you to accelerate a basic energy from the discard pile to two of your Ancient Tag Pokemon in play. So we're seeing one energy accelerated to the Fluttermane, from the discard and another to the bench roaring moon and energy was attached per turn from hand to that flutter main now that flutter main is dangerous and i think we're just gonna attack disrupt and chill here on our ancient side so long as that arceus v star remains in the active spot it's powerful V-Star power ability is shut off by that Midnight Fluttering. So Fluttermane will attack with Hex Hurl, 90 damage to the active, and then put two damage counters on your opponent's bench Pokemon in any way you like. One and one going on each of the Maridon to soften them up. Our ancient player identifies them as the biggest threats here. And play resumes over on the lightning side. Double turbo energy would be nice, but we're going for a pokey stop first. Discarding a Maridon, a Bravery Charm, and finding a letter of encouragement, I think, to add to the hand. Gardenia's Vigor is played now. I believe you draw a couple cards, then you can accelerate Grass Energy into play. Let's check it out. Gardenia's Vigor. Draw two cards. If you draw any cards this way, attach up to two Grass Energy from your hand to one of your bench Pokemon. More so just using it for the draw ability there. Uh, Palmy evolved on the bench here. Uh, lightning energy attached to the active Arceus V-Star. Energy switch getting into the mix now. Moving an energy off of that Zara Aura to the active Arceus V-Star. Arceus V-Star's Trinity Nova is fully powered up now. 200 damage and then search your deck for up to three basic energy cards and attach them to your Pokemon V in any way you like. It looks like we are doing the Trinity Nova and since the Maridon on the bench are both EX Pokemon the only valid target for Arceus V-Star's Trinity Nova is the bench Zeraora V which is just fine. Both of these Pokemon have no problem knocking out the Opposing ancient Pokemon with no HP buffs on them, of course. First prize card of the game taken, taken by our Lightning player here. They have not grabbed their prize card yet. They must take it. And I'm sure we'll see them resolve that soon enough. Until then, the Ancient Booster Energy Capsule attached to the active Roaring Moon that gives the Ancient Pokemon it's attached to plus 60 HP. That's a 200 HP single prize Pokemon right there. Next, Pokestop is used to discard the top three, and a Nest Ball and Super Rod will be found and added to the hand. Nest Ball will be slammed down immediately in order to bring another Roaring Moon into play.
The board is looking very established over on the Roaring Moon side. Now all we need to find is Professor Sada's to continue to attack and accelerate energy. Poke Gear 3.0 looking at the top seven cards and finding, looking at the entire deck actually here, and finding that Professor Sada's vitality. Professor Vita Sada's vitality is played now to accelerate an energy to each of the bench Roaring Moon and draw three cards. The deck is dangerously thin over on the ancient side, but there are ways to cycle cards back into the deck, such as that Super Rod and Pal Pad. Next, Superior Energy Retrieval will be played, discarding a couple cards, fueling that ancient count in the discard pile still, in order to bring back from the discard pile to the hand up to four basic energy, a couple of darkness energy brought back that way, one of them attached to the bench, Roaring Moon, all Roaring Moon in play are basically powered up here. And let's do an ancient card count. 18 cards potentially in the discard pile with the ancient tag. So 250 damage. Yep, that cleans up the KO on the damaged Arceus V-Star for two prize cards there. Now our lightning player must choose a Pokemon to promote into the active spot to take a K to take the place of the KO'd Pokemon. That charged up Zera Aura levitates to the active spot. Aha, our players are catching that the prize card wasn't taken on that last turn. So that's an easy fix, just take the prize card. And now the turn may begin. I'm not sure if they drew a card per turn in that mix up there, but we'll go ahead and keep rolling with things here as they do remember to draw their card at the beginning of their turn and continue this round two of the casual league tournament playing some Pokemon cards like it's 1999 Letter of Encouragement is played now. I believe that one is, that item is when you, your opponent takes a KO on their last turn. You could play Letter of Encouragement to search your deck, deck for up to three basic energy cards. Three lightning energy found from the deck with that letter there. Is there aura? I, I can't tell how many energy. There's at least two lightning energy on it. Maybe there's the full three. So it can attack. It unfortunately has the Thunderbolt attack that does 190 damage, just 10 short of KOing that capsuled Roaring Moon across from it. So Pal Pad will be played now. That item allows you to shuffle up to two supporter cards from your discard pile back into your deck. Looks like the supporter was added to the hand, but nope, they caught it. Now it goes back to the deck. So that resource can be used for later. But is it too little too late with the setup this ancient deck has currently? And really no knockout take. I guess a um, Maridon could take a knockout on the opposing Roaring Moon. And it can get fully powered up with something like Electric Generator this turn. I believe our Lightning player is using Tandem Unit now. Remember that allows them to search their deck for up to two Lightning Pokemon basic lightning Pokemon to add to the bench. Looks like no target was found off of the tandem unit there, but just a good way to take a peek at the deck and see what's in there. 
Next is a Pokey Stop, discarding the top three cards and three non-item cards. Just discarded there, so that just read. Discarded th top three cards of your deck in this case. We're debating a Zara Aura V Thunderbolt, Thunder's Bolt here for 190. And it looks like we're identifying that that Ancient Booster Energy Capsule does let that Roaring Moon barely hang on through this Thunderous Bolt attack as play resumes over on its side. Energy attached to the bench Roaring Moon. Super Rod being played now in order to shuffle back into the deck from the discard pile a single fighting energy. <laughs> Two cards in deck, just enough to finish the game. Remember, decking out, not being able to draw a card from your deck at the beginning of your turn is a lose condition in the Pokemon trading card game. So our players definitely have to be careful and very much aware of that. Vengeance Fletchling does 250-ish or more damage here. More than enough to KO the 210 HP Zara Aura V for two more prize cards in this end game of round two as Maridon moves into the active spot and play resumes over on its side electric generators I guess that Palmot or Palmot Palmy Palmo I haven't memorized them yet We'll just call it Pikachu on the bench, right? <laughs> I'm sure that Pikachu can do uh, 10 damage for very cheap to clean up the KO on the heavily damaged Roaring Moon. Also offering up only one prize card to the opponent in the active spot at the end of the turn while the opponent has two prize cards remaining. Well, let's see what our Lightning player can put together here in this endgame. They're inspecting their hand and their opponent's board, staring down the darkness on the other side. What can they do in order to come back into this game? They're going to start things off with a super rod. Shuffle back some resources from the discard pile into the deck. It looks like time was called here. So our Maridon player should be turn zero. Either way, we should have a end to this game. So Super Rod shuffles back into the deck. Any combination of Pokemon and basic energy cards. Didn't quite see which ones were there, but sure they were all valid targets here. One cool combo with the Super Rod and Maridon is you put the card and a light Lightning Basic back into the deck and then Maridon can instantly pluck it out with its tandem unit ability. However our Lightning player does not see a way out in this round and offers the concession. Meaning our Ancient player takes round two of the tournament. What do you guys think of this video in the commentary? Please leave feedback in the comments. Like this video, subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time in the Professor's Lab.